Okay, we have Chris Brown, uh, Director of Complex Coronary at Swedish in Seattle. Uh, he'll be taking us through the danger uh, shock trial in about two minutes. Go for it, Chris. Thanks, Aiden. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. So recent trial, danger shock, really nicely done um, from Germany, the UK, and Denmark. Um, essentially taking patients with cardiogenic shock, randomizing them to get an Impella CP or the control arm, which is sort of our usual standard of care. To get into the trial, you got to have a little reduced EF at least. You got to be in shock. You got to have an elevated lactate, and you need to have a STEMI that's been going on for less than 36 hours. Um, I'm just going to get right to it with it here. And the reality is that uh, they were able to show a significant benefit to having a uh, microaxial flow pump, about a 12.7, it's almost 13% reduction in mortality. The number needed to treat is eight. It's pretty low. Think about all the cardiac drugs, all the interventions we have. To have yep. a number needed to treat of eight for mortality is quite dramatic. Um, so really? really quite impressive there. And you can see here that these curves are actually continuing to diverge uh, at 180 days, which is when the, when the uh, end point for the trial was. So we'll see uh, as they prolong the, the observation of these patients, what that really looks like and, and how those patients kind of continue to, to, to do better, if you will. I think it's important to note that this is the first trial of its kind to show an improvement with mechanical support in cardiogenic shock patients from acute MI. Uh, we've tried it with balloon pump, of course, we're all pretty aware of that. We've tried it with ECMO and uh, with little success, but um, here with microaxial flow pump, um, huge improvement in mortality. And you can kind of envision why that would be, right? The impella unloads your LV. Your LV is already in extremis when we're doing these things. You know, we have ongoing trials for things that are similar to this, although different in North America, but really clearly shows that uh, when you put an impella in uh, to support the LV, when the LV is not doing well and you're in shock, that, that good things can come of that. Now, it's not without any risk, of course, as you can see from these other trials and danger shock, you know, the risk of limb ischemia, the risk of bleeding, uh, these are all higher uh, with the mechanical support devices than they are uh, with the sort of quote unquote standard of care. I think that the key here is to remember that, you know, you have improvement um, in mortality for a small exchange of what should be manageable complications. We should be able to manage our limb ischemia and our bleeding uh, from these patients if we're doing things from a technical standpoint that's thoughtful. You can't have 0% uh, complication rate, but you can manage them and that can really be uh, important. The other thing I'll mention is there was an increased risk of renal replacement therapy uh, with the Impella, which is a little different than some of the other trial data that's been shown. Um, it's a little convoluted though, because, because people survived longer and more people survived, in yep. the mechanical support arm, the likelihood that they could have had a problem with their renal function because they had shock uh, is is real. So there's a survivorship bias there, uh, which probably explains this. Uh, and of course, you can get some hemolysis with a mechanical device that you don't get with the standard of care. But I think the survivorship bias probably makes the most sense here. Um, but you know, I think again, manageable uh, manageable complication that that you can get through and and recover from and and live longer if we support your shock appropriately with mechanical support. So just a quick rundown of the trial and, uh, you know, love to hear your thoughts about it. Practice changing for you, Chris? I think so. I mean, we were using this when we needed to, but I'll, I'll be honest with you. You know, I have supported people in many ways in STEMI with, with shock. I've given them inotropes like levofed, added dibutamine. I've put in balloon pumps to do my cases, but I think this really kind of turned it full corner for me. If your lactate is elevated or you have signs of shock in any way and I'm doing your STEMI, from my perspective, you're getting you're getting temporary MCS, so I can do the work that you need safely, and I can improve your mortality because uh, there's nothing bigger than that. I mean, this is this is huge to have a number needed to yeah. treat of eight. Uh, really, that really is is impressive. Pretty hard endpoint mortality, not a combined endpoint. Yeah, no, I agree. I think yeah. it's yeah. Uh, pretty pretty game changing. All right, Chris, thanks for the, for the summary. All right, good man. Have a good weekend. Bye.